Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this. It's World Book Day, so I'm dressed up as kind of a cheap Arthur Dent. I know it's not the, the right robe, um, but we're going for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the old version of the game, but with updated graphics. It's not a DOS box screen, it's a browser, so I don't know how this is going to go. This is one of those text-based adventure games that are ridiculously hard because there's no visual cues, but on this one there is some kind of visual cue on this version, so I've heard. I've not played it before. I think I played the original a little bit, but got very frustrated with it very quickly. So that's what we're doing here. Um, so I've got some snacks, got a bit of wine. Let's do Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 30th Anniversary Edition. First thing we can see is a massive big red button that says, please press this button. Get some volume. So we press the red button. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You wake up. The room is spinning very gently around your head. Or at least it would be if you could see, which you can't. It is pitch black. Okay, let's type. I guess we type on this one. Open eyes. They are. Okay, they're open. Um, turn on light. Looked light. I can't spell. That's a problem. Oh, oh wow. Look at that. That's lovely. In the bedroom, it's a mess. It's a small bedroom with a faded carpet, old wallpaper. There's a wash basin, a chair, a tatty dressing ground slug over it. Okay. Um, put on dressing gown. You're not holding a gown. Oh my word, get gown. You can't reach it from the bed. The effort almost kills you. This is impossibly hard. Walk to gown. It's here. Hey, get gown. You cannot reach it. Reach. Oh, wait. Get out of bed. Very difficult, but you manage it. The room is still spinning. It dips and sways a little. Okay. Get gown. Luckily, it is large enough for you to get hold of. You notice something in the pocket. Check pocket. Oh. Search pocket. Oh, open pocket. It's hard to open and close the pockets when you see I'm wearing the gown. Wear gown. <laughs> you are now wearing your gown. Open pocket. Opening your gown reveals a thing your auntie gave you, which you didn't know what it was. It is a bubble analysis pocket fluff. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I see. A buffled. Yeah, okay. Take. Ooh, okay. I got 10 points. Great. You swallow the tablet, gums down, and you behave in an order in a manner. Okay. Um, Search room. I don't know where search. Uh, look out of window. As you part your curtains, you see that it's a bright morning. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, the meadows are blooming, and a large yellow bulldozer is advancing on your home. Oh. Leave room. Front porch. You rush downstairs in a panic. It's in close porch of your home. The garden lies on the top of the pile of junk wheel. Pick up mail. You go at the mail. Open door. It's already open. Leave house. Oh, this is cute. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. He looks startled to see you emerge and yells at you to get out of the way. The bulldozer rumbles towards your home. Shout stop. Oh. Lay down. Cause that's what he does in the book, isn't it? What do you want to lay down? Oh. You lie down in the path of the adventure bulldozer. Prosser yells at you, for Christ's sake, move. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stay. The noise of the giant bulldozer is now violent, so violently loud that you can't hear the Prosser yelling to warn you that you will be killed if you don't get out of the way. You must, you see him gesticulating wildly. I thought we'd just stay there, because then he won't actually run us over, will he? Stay. 
Moments later, your friend Ford Prefect arrives. He hardly seems to notice your predicament, but keeps glancing nervously at the sky. He says, hello, Arthur. Takes a towel from his battered leather satchel and offers it to you. Towels. Hello. Talking to yourself is a sign of... Oh, take towel. As you take it, Ford says, Uh, look, thanks for lending me the towel. Been nice to know you. Got to go. He smiles oddly and walks down the country lane. Follow Ford. Oh, stand up. It's very particular, this game, isn't it? Oh. Two awards. Your home collapses in a cloud of dust. And a stray flying blick hits you squarely on the back of the head. You try to think of some suitable last words, but what with the confusion of the moment and the spinning head, you're unable to compose anything. Pithy and expire in silence. What? Ha, what? I'm dead. Okay. You keep out of this. You're dead. An ambulance arrives. <laughs> Well, that was fun. Okay, let's start again and try not to die this time. Turn on light. Aha, get out of bed. Okay, pick up gown. Open pocket. Oh, wear gown. <laughs> <laughs> Open pocket. Mm. Take tablet. Right, headache's gone. Great, we're on the way. Look out of window. I spot your curtains, bulldozer. Ah, leave room. Oops. Get mail. You get a pile of mail. Uh, leave house. Mr. Prosser from the local council standing. Yell, stop. <clears throat> stop. What do you want to stop? Bulldozer. Oh, stop bulldozer. You lie down in the path of... Oh, there we go. Move. Stay. The bullets of thunders towards you. The ground is shaking beneath you as you lay in the mud. Lie in the mud. Check mail. Oh. Look at mail. There are many pieces of mail here. Most from the computer called. Most from a computer company called Infocom, which wants you to buy their games. Nice. Hidden underneath is an official letter from the local council dated some two years ago and inexplicably not delivered till now, explaining that a demolition order has been served on your home. The demolition of the... The demolition of the town is today. Oh, what do I do? What would I do now? Hold up towel. Oh, I'm dead again. Light on. Turn on light. Right, this is a bit every if I do anything, if I get up and move, I'll just get squashed again. So I don't know what I should be doing here really. In this bit. <laughs> Very clever. It looks like there's a lot you should be panicking about. Give um mail to what was the name? Mr. B I'm just really guessing now. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations on your fine dental hygiene. Oh, okay. Well, as a bulldozer goes coming towards me, what, what would I do? It won't stop. Um, run. South. Oh. Stand up. No! <laughs> uh, 
So at the moment, I have put on my dressing gown, searched the pockets, taken a tablet to cure my headache, and that's it. Get screwdriver taken, get toothbrush. As you pick up the toothbrush, a tree outside the window collapses. There's no casual relationship between these two events. Pick up a phone. You pick up the receiver. A moment later, the dial and tone is suddenly cut off. Glancing through the window, you can, can't help but notice the large old oak tree of which you are particularly fond crashing through the phone cable. Shouldn't you be taking more interesting events in the world around you? While you've still got it? Okay. Look out window. As you part the curtains, you see a large, large bright morning, the sun shining, the birds are singing, the meadows are blooming, and a large yellow bulldozer is advancing on your home. Oh no. The bulldozer rumbles slowly towards your home. Right, I'm going to save the game here. Save. You must be signed in to save your game. Ah, oh, I'm not signed in. You just got to do this. You've got to do it in one go. Throw thing at bulldozer. You missed. <laughs> nice. Uh, stop bulldozer. You lie down in the path of the advising bulldozer. Prosser lells at you. For Christ's sake, move. Stay. The noise of the giant bulldozer is now so violently loud that you can't even hear the Prosser yelling to warn you that you will be killed if you don't get out of the way. You just see him gesticulating wildly. Throw. Screw. Driver. At. Bulldozer. Oh! I can't believe that worked. He says, you missed. With a terrible grinding of gears, a bulldozer comes to an abrupt halt just in front of you. It shakes, shudders, and emits a, no a noxious, emits noxious substances all over you. Your rose bed. Prosser is incoherent with rage. Moments later, your Fen Ford prefect arrives. He says, hello, Arthur. Greet Ford. Oh. Say hello to Ford. Ask Ford for help. <laughs> to stop bulldozer. Ford, busy scanning the sky for something, ignores you. Oh no. Okay. Stay. Ford glances uncomfortably at the sky. He offers you the towel again. Day. Progress. A Ford seems oblivious to your trouble. So you ask F Ford, what about my home? He looks startled, then guilty. He starts to say something and stops. He starts to say something else and stops. Suddenly he seems to see the bulldozer for the first time. He stops starting to say things and starts. He seems to come to a momentous decision, says he has something of earth-shattering importance to tell you, and stresses the importance of a quick drink at the horse and groom. Pointing towards Prosser, you exclaim, but that man wants to knock down my house. Ford goes off for a quiet word with the Prosser. From where you're lying, you cannot hear what's happening, although they seem deeply engrossed in conversation. Stay. Time passes. Ford and Prosser stop talking and approach you. Ford says that Prosser has agreed to lie in your place so that the two of you can go off to the pub. Reluctantly, Prosser steps forward and lays down in front of the bulldozer. You stand up. Progress! Walk to country lane. Ah! South? Aha! Progress. Come on, Arthur, says Ford impatiently and enters the pub. Enter pub. Pub. The pub is pleasant and cheerful and full of, full of pleasant and cheerful people who don't know they're about 12 minutes to live and they're off for having a spot of lunch. Some music is playing on no jukebox. The exit is east. Ford Prefect is here. There is a barman serving at the bar. Behind the bar is a shelf. 
It is full of the sort of items you find on shelves behind bars and pubs. Ford buys lots of beer and offers you half to you. Muscle relaxants, he says. Impenetrably. Drink. It's very good beer, brewed by a small local company. You particularly like its flavour, which is why you woke up feeling so wretched this morning. You're at somebody's birthday party here in the pub last night. You begin to relax and enjoy yourself. So when Ford mentions that he's from a small planet in the vicinity of Beetlejuice, not from Guildford, as he usually claims, you take it in your stride and say, oh yes, which part? Amazing. I love this book. Lots of beer. It really is very pleasant stuff. With a very good dry nutty flavour, some light froth on top and a deep colour. It's exactly room temperature. You reflect that the world cannot be all bad when there are such pleasures in it. Ford mentions that the world is going to end in about 12 minutes. Drink again, I guess. <laughs> There's a distant crash, which Ford explains is nothing to worry about. Probably just your house being knocked down. Drink again. Oops. Oh no! Ford about towel. Get towel if I die again. You already have it, okay. Exit pub. You see the huge boulders are heaving itself among the cloud of brick dust, which is all that remains of your home. As you stand up, start up the lane, a small dog runs up to you, yapping. Ford runs after you. Run to house. I don't know, north. Ah, there we go. You reach the side of what was your home. It's now a pile of rubble. Oh no, look at the house. It's messed up. Mr. Prosser looks cheapishly triumphant. A trick few people can do, as it requires a lot of technically complex deltoid muscle work. Give mail to Prosser. With a noise like a cross between a Led Zeppelin farewell concert and the eruption of <laughs> Krakatoka, a huge fleet of Vogon constructor ships fly overhead and announces that Earth will be demolition, demolished to make way for a new hyperspace bypass in two of your Earth minutes. In all turmoil, you drop the thing your aunt gave you, which you didn't know what it was, and it rolls away. It's the least of your worries. Anyway, you've been trying to get rid of it for years. Hold Ford. <laughs> Hold Ford. What a concept. The vast yellow ships thunder across the sky, spreading waves of terror and panic in their wake. The voice of the Vogon sla captain slams across the country, insisting that the planning charts and demolition orders have been available at the local planning office in Alpha Century for 50 years, and it's too late to start making a fuss about it now. Throughout the noise, Ford is shouting at you. He removes a small black device from his satchel, but accidentally drops it at your feet. Pick up device. Fierce gales whip across the land and thunder bangs continuously through the air in the wake of the giant ship. Ford fights to reach you, but the wind is too fierce. Further announcements from the Vogan captain make it clear that demolition will begin in just a few seconds. Through the blinding rain, you see lights flicking on the small device. Give device to Ford. You can't reach him in this wind. Hold device up. Oh. <laughs> no! Useless, utterly useless. The Earth is destroyed by the fleet of Vogon construction ships. Well, what should I have done? <laughs> oh, I can't be bothered to do all that again, and we can't save the game, so I'm going to leave this one here. Um, that was fun, very frustrating. I think I'd probably want to sign up and be able to save the game to get through it, but it was a fun little game. Tricky little game, difficult. I'm sure people could do it much better than I could. Thanks so much for joining me for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 30th Anniversary Edition. It's been great. Uh, thanks to the people who joined in the live stream. And I'll see you all on the next one. Please don't forget to, to drop a like on this one. If, you have, if you're watching this on YouTube, please drop a, li drop a like. If you're following on the stream, please follow me. It'll get updates on when I do other boring, dull games like this. <laughs> see you all again. Bye, all.